Hi everyone, today in stark contrast with my last two videos on how to create a Venn diagram, uh, today I'm going to fairly quickly show you how to create another unique infographic. Similar to my very first video on how to create a thermometer chart, my rocket chart also tracks the progress made towards a predetermined goal. Now instead of filling a vial with some liquid, today we are going to land a rocket on the moon. And with no further ado, Ta-da! Pretty cool, right? Now, most of this process is very simple, with the most difficult part being simply finding and fiddling with your rocket image once you have it. But even that isn't, as I'll show you, uh, rocket science. <laughs> uh, Chief Hun, now let's begin. Uh, go to work. Okay. Now, what you see here is a very simple uh, scatter plot with five points, the moon, the base rocket, the flying rocket, the landed rocket, and the flag. And behind it you have the sky, which I use a simple column. All right. Now this sky image is not easy to find and I had to spend way more time than I should have to find this image. So I would strongly suggest just uh, taking a moment and doing a screenshot of this image here. You hold down control and then PERT screen, P-R-T-S-C-N. It should be on the upper right hand corner of your keyboard uh, along with scroll lock and pause break. Okay. Now for demonstration purposes I just use this little radial dial in order to increase my progress seen here. But what you would probably most likely have one cell that is your goal and another cell that would be how much you reach and you would just manually enter this value here. And once you have these two cells you would find the percentage that you've reached and this is what we really use in order to determine the altitude of the rocket and whether or not it has finally landed or it hasn't even started. But I'll show you exactly that. So let's start with creating the chart. Go to insert column 2D column. Okay, start with just fresh here. Uh, add. I'm going to have the sky. We're going to call it the sky series name. And series value is going to be 100. Okay, so in this case, uh, the way I have it, just basically think of 100 as being 100%. And I'm going to, since that's percent, we don't want to go over 100%, so we're going to fix this to be 100. Okay. And then, like I said, this is not an easy image to find, but you just need to find it somehow. Maybe draw it if you have an artistic uh, ability and just paste it. You clicked on the column and then you control V, uh, paste it in for that column. So that's done. Next, we need to add our five points. Okay, so we're going to click on just the chart area in general. Go to design, select data, add. We're going to give each one of them a name and we're going to treat them as separate series. And so you'll just go one at a time, series name, and this. Oh, so right now it's still expecting it to be a column. That's fine for the very first one. So we'll just have to sit, hit OK. So this is supposed to be the moon, but we don't want it as a column. We need to select it and then change chart type. Scatter. Okay. So now we have it. Now we can modify it the way we want. Let's go back to moon after going to select data edit and now it's asking for an X and Y value so I have two columns next to each series name X and Y okay and we're gonna do that for all five points I'm gonna accelerate this without saying anything so because it's just doing the same thing over and over again save time
Okay, so I've added all of the series to my chart now, but as you'll notice, I only am showing three of them. That's the cool thing with the NA function. If either the X or Y series values is NA, that will cause the entire point to disappear. So, and I'll explain the formulas in a second, but basically, if it, if the rocket has landed, then it should not also be flying, and it also shouldn't be uh, on Earth. So I have a function that changes depending on what percentage we're at. And since like this percentage is greater than one percent or 0 0.01, then it's going to come up as NA, and otherwise it'll be 0.95. Now. So what this is, the x, you know, x and y, uh, it's going to treat this very center point as 1. So 0.95 is just a little to the left here. And you'll just have to play around with this until you have it in the right position that you want. It totally depends on how big your chart is and where you position your moon and so forth. I positioned my moon right in the center with at 1. Okay. So... Now that we have these points, we need to change them out for the clip art. So for the moon, what I did was I made the chart as big as I thought I would want it to be. And then this is one method you can use. I have the moon this size. I copy it and which the moon is the square. I'm going to click on the square and do control V. And there's the moon. Notice it's the same size as this one. Now, for the rocket and the flag, instead of trying to shrink my flag image down to what you see here, uh, there's a different method you can use. I'm going to select my flag that I got off of uh, the clip art. Just enter flag, and you should find this one, uh, depending on what version of Excel you have. So you need to copy your flag. Notice it has a clear background. Uh, that's important, so you don't have just weird background around it. I'm going to select the flag point, go to Format, Data Series, Marker Options, Built-in, Square. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And then Marker Fill, got a lot of options here. We want Picture or Texture Fill. And we're going to hit Clipboard, clipboard which will automatically put whatever was the last thing we copied uh, as the image. Now, just to show you one last issue you have to deal with here, I'm going to click outside. Notice it has a border around it, and you might remember it was an orange square, so it has an orange border around it by default. To get rid of that, you want to go to Marker Line Color, do a solid, or actually you want no line. And by doing that, click outside, there, no border around the flag. Okay, and so I'm going to uh, be quiet for a little bit as I do the same thing with the other point, which this point right here is the landed rocket. Okay, so we have both the rocket and the flag. I'll manipulate the size of the rocket in a little bit. Uh, but before I get in, so I have it at 100%, but once it, before it reaches the moon, it becomes the flying rocket. And so we have to do the same for that. And once, if we're just starting, if this is zero or one, uh, you have still the base rocket, so I also have to do the same for these two points. So I'm going to be quiet again. Okay, so more or less you have it by this point. So you have the flying rocket, 
landed rocket. Oops, I didn't do that part. Marker line, no marker line. Okay, there we go. So landed, shooting, and I'm going to save us all a little bit of time, go to 100% progress, and it's landed. Now, it doesn't look like it's landed because it's still up here. It is tilted, though, and you have the flag. Uh, that's just a sizing and positioning issue that you can just simply manipulate by changing uh, these values here and here instead of 0.95 maybe now we need it to be 0.98 okay and so just moving that a little bit and you can see the flag I have as being whatever is in this cell uh, plus a little extra noise so just manipulate that a little bit to fix it um, but like I said the probably the hardest part is this rocket that I use uh, to get this image, I went into the clip art, went to rocket, and it, the second uh, thing that showed up was this rocket here. Now this rocket already has the flame, but it is crooked from the beginning, and I wanted it to be vertical. So I went ahead, selected the image, and using this green dot right here, you can click and drag it so it's vertical, like I did here. But you'll notice now the border around it is cockeyed as well. So we needed to fix that. And the only way I know how to fix that issue is to copy it and paste it into Paint, Microsoft Paint. Paste, recopy it, and paste it. And one thing to be aware is when you paste an image from Paint, for some reason, it always assumes you want to paste it in A1. It's really annoying. Okay, so I have that. And then I wanted to crop it a little. You still want to leave a little white space around the edges. So we're going to Picture Tools, Format, Crop. Both sides a little, still leaving room. You don't want it to be all the way. And I probably did too extreme of a job here. So let's go with that. And then if you haven't watched my thermometer video, the next step is to uh, remove the background, which is kind of an art. And I'm not going to spend too much time except to actually show you just a little bit of me doing it. So you get the idea. You have this border, which I don't really understand. And just fiddle around with it until it looks like it's removing the right stuff. The stuff that, what it's assuming is your background is the pink area. So right now it, for some reason, thinks this is a little too white, so it's assuming. So we can actually change it further in addition to modifying this border uh, by going here. And you can either put a dot, or you can also mark areas to remove. Uh, and instead of using a dot, you can draw a line if you're trying to cover a lot of area. Okay. So just keep uh, chipping away at it. Don't go too crazy because, as you can see, the rocket does turn out very small in our image. So now we have that. So you have no border uh, with the vertical rocket and the nice 90 degree uh, box around it. And then you need to get rid of the flame. I'll let you, you know, you can crop it out or treat it as a background using the same remove background option under format. And then you want it, in my case, I wanted to put it to the side of the moon, so I needed to tilt it a little bit. And so once you have the landed, just tilt it a little bit, and you just have to manipulate it and play around with how much to tilt it. And then the last thing I would say is one thing you have to keep in mind is this, the, the width here of the tilted rocket is wider than the, uh, what you have here because, you know, it's 90 degrees. Yeah. So just, you'll have to play around with the width and probably you'll probably experience that the or, you know, the inclusion of the flame and the removal of the flame also can make your uh, image shorter or longer. 
So you might have to just play around with stretching them a little bit so that it doesn't look like the rock is becoming a whole different rocket as it transitions. Uh, to modify the size, so I showed you how to modify the position by adjusting these points. And I believe these uh, functions are accurate. Uh, you just manipulate here, but to manipulate the size, uh, when you did it this way, now to manipulate the moon, you can just manipulate uh, the thing you copied, just copy and paste it. But for the rocket and the flag, you're going to format data series, marker options, and just use this little dial here up to the appropriate amount. Uh, it's all up to you and how big you've made uh, your chart. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much it. The last thing I didn't do, but I'd like to see someone else do, I think would be pretty cool. Instead of just having one single rocket, to have, you could actually make it so it's a race. So you have one rocket here, and maybe the Russians over here. I couldn't find a Russian flag, unfortunately. And you have them both rocketing to the moon, and only one makes it, and the other one blows up, or just... You know, it doesn't have to be that violent, but I think that would be pretty cool. Well, um, thank you for watching, and I hope you'd enjoyed it and maybe learned some. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.